Hello, my name is Robert Dean Steele, and it is, of course, July the 27th. That's right, July 27th, 2023. And today I'm going to be spending my prayer time based upon Ephesians chapter 1, verse number, uh, of course, it is 15 right through to 23. Now, we're going to pray along this lines because we want God to open up the wonderful heavens today. Father, this is an absolutely important prayer time, a time that, Lord, we're going to set aside because we know that it is absolutely essential that today that we would be known as people who have the ability to touch heaven. And we need to touch heaven, Lord, today because we need a breakthrough today. Now, the Apostle Paul said, for this reason, I've heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and, of course, your love for all God's people. Lord, we want to see our faith be exhibited and demonstrated before all people. Lord, Paul said, to the Ephesians church, though two qualities that are absolutely known in your church is your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love for all people. Lord, I pray today that wherever we find ourselves, wherever we are or whoever we are with today, that Lord, these would be qualities that would be demonstrated and exhibited throughout our lives. People mean to know that we are the disciples of Jesus Christ. And the way that it is demonstrated, Lord, is, of course, through our lives. And people need to see that. Lord, today, we have so many voices out there that are talking contrary to the Word of God. Talking contrary, Lord, to the things that are beneficial. We have an enemy out there, Lord, that right now is robbing and killing and destroying. He is using accusation, temptation, deception. We have a world out there that, Lord, is actively and powerfully promoting pride, pleasure, and possessions. Lord, I was just reading today how that there were an Edmund, a couple of Albertans that just won $70 million. Now, Lord, they think that they found a treasure. I, I love that one scripture that I read today from Psalm 119, which Ezra says this, Lord, I rejoice in your word. I have found happiness in your word. I look at it as if I have discovered a treasure. Lord, we have discovered a treasure. It is eternal and abundant life. It is priceless. There, It is beyond uh, any value that we could put on it. And Lord, we're grateful. We're grateful that, Lord, we can exhibit that today. And I pray with all my heart that each one of us would recognize the in, you know, incredible value and the possession and the treasure that we have. And of course, God also looks at us as bezel, the uh, uh, treasures in earthen vessels, as, as the scripture says. Lord, we cannot in any way demean or put down, Lord, the treasured possession that we are. And I pray today that, Lord, we would have that view of ourselves, that we would have a not just a modest estimation of our own self-worth, but, Lord, that we would understand that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a unique called-out individual. And Paul was praying. The reason he was praying these prayers today is because he knew that, Lord, this was a very important prayer. He also says, I have, not stipping, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. So here is Paul. He's focusing, Lord, on the people of Ephesus. But we have an application for us today as well. Lord, we need to constantly remember that, Lord, we are in a, we are, especially when we pray, we are involved in a rescue mission. We are actually standing between the living and the dead. We are like Aaron and Eleazar. And Father, if we do not pray, things are not going to change. It's as simple as that. Wishing and hoping and, you know, kind of saying with anxiousness, I wish things would really change. Doesn't necessarily, and it most likely won't happen. 
Why? Because the power of prayer is the most powerful force on in the universe because God, who is the most powerful being and force in the universe, is standing behind it. So thank you, Lord, for that today. And he wants to say, I'm giving thanks. Now, Lord, that is a, a wonderful uh, opportunity to just say, Lord, I want to thank you for all the wonderful things that you've done. You are Jehovah Jireh, my provider. You are Jehovah Nissi, my banner. Lord, we could use all the compound names of God. But the reality is that, Lord, Thanksgiving is actually a release in the area of prayer. In fact, Paul says, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God for those who are in Christ Jesus. It is the will of God that we actually give thanks. And it is also the will of God that we pray one for another. In fact, James says, pray one for another. Jesus said, ask anything in my name and you shall have it. So prayer is, of course, the vehicle in which we can release and receive the benefits of heaven. Also, he says, he gives, I keep uh, giving thanks or asking the Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom, revelation, that you may know him better. So the first thing he's praying, he says, I'm asking God the Father. He says, who is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is, of course, the object of who we pray through. We also pray through the Holy Spirit, and we pray through the avenue of Jesus Christ. So he says, I'm praying right now. What am I praying? He says, I am praying today that you would have wisdom and revelation. So he's praying that God would give you the ability to be able to discern and apply the app, the information and also as well the different knowledge that you are receiving. You know, we get uh, we gather information, we gather knowledge every single day. We're learning. And the incredible thing about today is the fact that we now have more access in our fingertips than any knowledge that in any time in history. If you want to find something out, all you have to do is Google. All you have to do is go to one of the search engines, put it out there, and away you go. And basically, that is how it is. And uh, so we have lots of knowledge. But what we need is we need wisdom. We need to know how to apply that knowledge. And he also says the revelation. There are two things that we need. Revelation is, of course, things that you never knew before, given to you by divine, divine um, assistance. And then there is illumination, which is, of course, the you read the Word of God and it's illuminated to you. It's given light to you. And so those are the ways. But he's saying, I want you to actually receive from the Lord some insight that you've never seen before, stuff from the Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus, in the upper room discourse, said this. He says this, the Holy Spirit will take that which he hears and will receive and will pass it on to you. And so our responsibility is to be open to the Holy Spirit. And so, Holy Spirit, I want to pray today that we would uh, allow ourselves, and we're just going to take a moment because this is an absolutely essential part of our prayer time today. Lord, right now, we want to clear all the channels. We want to make sure that, Lord, nothing is in the way that is grieving or quenching the Holy Spirit. So please, right now, forgive us. Because, Lord, we want to know Jesus Christ better. That's what revelation and wisdom was all about. He says, I pray that you will understand and know him better. That's what it's all about, to be like Jesus. Then he goes on to pray this. He says, I pray that the eyes of your heart would be enlightened, that you would know the hope to which you've been called and the riches of his glorious inheritance of his people. So he's praying. He says, Lord, I want the eyes of your heart. Now, that is, of course, a metaphor. But what he's praying is that we would have clear vision that the blindness that we have been dealing with. You know, the book of John, <clears throat> excuse me, talks about spiritual blindness, spiritual deafness, spiritual hardness of the heart and dementia. So, Father, today, we want the eyes of our heart open. We want our ears 
to be able to hear. We want our minds, Lord, to be able to receive that information. And Lord, we want our hearts today to be, you know, cracked, penetrated. Our hearts of stone turn to a heart of flesh. Because, Lord, you want us to know, Lord, that we um, would know to why we've been called and also the riches of the glorious inheritance that we have as his holy people. He says that we are a holy people. And that's what Peter said. He said, we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a unique called out individual. That is who we are. It's not what we want to be. It is who we are. It, we have a position. But Lord, we also need to grow in that position. We need to establish that position. Just because you have a large bank account, for example, the real issue is not keep putting stuff into it, but actually using that bank account to actually give us the life that God intended. And, uh, you know, it's like a billionaire sitting on a billion dollars and, you know, living in a shack, you know, so that he can accumulate more. A miser is not what God wants us to be. He wants us to actually use the bank account that we have, the glorious inheritance that we have both now. But and that's why Paul said he, that my God can supply every need according to his riches and glory. There are riches and glory that God wants us to access, not just to look and say, well, I'm looking for the day that when Jesus Christ comes. No, let's ex let's um, right now use the finances that we have to not just, you know, put away or scroll them away, you know, for somebody else, but that we would actually use them in such a way that we would be able to live the life that we're supposed to live. That's what God wants. And he wants us, to, that's why he's praying. He says, I want you to be enlightened. I want you to be able to see what is going on because that that you would happen, that we would have that wonderful hope. We got this great hope. That's what he's saying. He says, the hope that we have is based on the love of God. And because we have this glorious hope that Jesus Christ is coming back, that we're going to be with him, because Jesus said that in the Upper Room Discourse. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you, and where I am, you are also going to be also. So, Father, we're praying for that. We're praying that, Lord, we're going to be able to have our hearts and eyes open, that we're going to understand the hope that we have and the glorious inheritance that we have, which we are going to access and use today. Also as well, he says that you would know the incomparable great power that uh, to us who believe that power is the strength of the mighty strength. And he says, listen, you got resurrection power. Lord, we want to access that resurrection power. You know, that's what Peter was talking about in Acts chapter 3. He says, that which I have, I want to pass unto you. He says, silver and gold have I not, but such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Lord, that's what we want to do today. We want to release into our world, Lord, the power of prayer, the resurrection power. That same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us. We want to release it, Lord. It's like what we were talking about before. It's great to have all these beautiful things that are uh, ready for us. But if we don't use them, it's like a car sitting in your driveway that has all this wonderful power, but you never get in, you never turn the key on, and you don't go anywhere. It's a useless operation. You can go out and look and Man, I got a nice car. It looks so good in my driveway. But if you never use it, what good is it? It's a piece of metal. It has a motor. It has a steering wheel. It has tires. It has the ability to take you somewhere, but you don't access. You don't use it. That's what he's praying. I pray that you'll use the power that's available to you right now, that it will be a benefit not only to yourself, but to others and in the world that you live. Because we are a treasure, but God wants to use us to touch others for him. Then he says, I pray that this was exerted when he rose Christ from the dead and seated him in the right hand of the heavenly realms. He says, listen, 
You need to know that right now there's a power that's available. It's the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, seated him in the heavenly realms at the right hand of the Father. That is a position that we also have. You say, well, wait a minute, I'm not sitting at the right hand of God. No, but you are a joint heir with the individual who has the power and the authority, the anointing, and also as well the sovereignty. And we can act on his behalf in our world, and we need to do that today. So, Father, help us to do that. Help us, Lord, today to recognize that we are in a, literally, a fireman, a firewoman position. We are on a first responder mission. There are people out there that are dying. And there's an old song that goes, rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful. Jesus will save. So, Father, help us to recognize that. And help us to recognize that, Lord, there's a resurrection power that is given to us because Jesus Christ said, I'm going back to the Father. And he says, I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit will come and comfort you, and you will access all that God has for you. And that's the real issue. Lord, we can have this thought in our mind. Say, okay, Lord, I know the Word of God tells me that. But prayer is the avenue and also as well the wonderful way that we can access all of that. It's like, I hate to use the term, an ATM card. Let's say, for example, a billionaire walks up to us and hands us an ATM card. And he says, okay, you can use this card anytime, any place, anywhere to access as much financial help that you need. You'd be kind of go, whoa, that's kind of cool. Now, the real issue is, do you believe the eternal billionaire, trillionaire, quadrillionaire, the one who has all in care, the inexhaustible riches? Are you going to access that? Are you going to take a hold of that? Are you going to walk with that? That's the real issue right there. And Father, we're going to do that. We're going to take that right now. And that's what Paul was praying. He was praying that the church would recognize that and that we would recognize it as well. Now, he also said, far above all rule, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is evoked, not only in the present, but in the one to come. He says, listen, there are some things that you need to recognize. He, he said, listen, I want you to understand that right now, because Jesus Christ is sitting at the right hand of the Father, and because Jesus Christ has power, authority, dominion over every other individual, every other name, you know, basically, there is no greater name, both in the present age and also in ages past and in ages future. In the name of Jesus, every name, will, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. This is the time where he says, listen, you need to understand who you are, uh, joint heir, and also as well, uh, locked into. This individual has a name that is above every name. He has power, he has dominion, he has authority, and listen, through him, the wonderful victories, the wonderful promises, the wonderful benefits of heaven, and in the inheritance thereof can be accessed right now. You can believe it, but then also you need to ask. You have to access it. You have to release it. That's what we're talking about today. He says, I also pray that God has placed all things under him to be under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything. That's who Jesus is. And that is who has given us this wonderful avenue this wonderful conduit, this wonderful channel in which we can pray today. That's who he is. That's what Paul wanted people to know. He wanted people to know that this is who Jesus is. Now, Jesus just wasn't a guy who walked around on the earth for 33 days or 33 years. He's not just this guy who did miracles, you know, was a nice guy, taught some, you know, really cool teaching. He is, of course, 
the second person of the Godhead. He was God with a face. He was the personification and the perfect union of God and man. And, of course, he wants us to know, and I love this last part, which is his body. And in him, the fullness that fills everything in every way. He says, listen, I pray that you'll understand that Jesus Christ did something for us. He gave us this eternal and abundant life. He gave us the responsibility of being his ambassadors and representatives in our world. Now, the greatest way that we can do it is standing on the word of God and also praying, accessing this wonderful opportunity, this wonderful benefit, this wonderful way of communicating and communing with God. It all happened. We are his church. And I, I love that. I love the fact that because of all that Jesus did on the cross, I mean, when we, you know, just a few weeks ago, well, a couple months ago now, we had, of course, Easter. And Easter was that time where we focused on the broken body and the shed blood of Jesus Christ. It was that time where we, you know, said, okay, Jesus died. That's what happened on Good Friday. And then he was in the grave Friday, Saturday. And, but then on Sunday morning, he rose from the dead. What a wonderful thing that he did. And, and Paul was praying in this prayer, all these things that we've been mentioning, the fact that, you know, we need to be walking in faith and also love, that we should be people of prayer, that we would, you know, basically have a spirit of wisdom and revelation and a knowledge of God. We got to get to know him better. Lord, that's my prayer today, is that we would know you better. That, Lord, we would have our hearts enlightened. That we would, you know, know the glorious riches and the inheritance of uh, of his people. That, Lord, we would walk with that resurrection power, that incomparable power, those incomparable riches, Lord. That, Lord, we would understand that Jesus Christ rose from the dead, is seated at the right hand of God positionally. That we, through his name, through his power, Lord, we can pray on behalf of those in our world today. And that, Lord, that name which is above every name. We're praying in the name of Jesus. You know, one of the things that I, I just absolutely uh, blows my mind is the authority that we have in Jesus Christ. We There's a lot of people out there that are afraid of the enemy. I've had people t say to me over the years, well, you know, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't, you know, attack the enemy. Yes, we should, you know, because he's holding people in bondage. And Jesus Christ came to destroy the works of the devil. And because of the fact that Jesus did this, Jesus actually said, we're going to do greater works. But you see, the highest and holy calling and the real way that that can happen is through the power of prayer, that we would see the supernatural become the natural. And that, you know, God has given us this wonderful responsibility. He is above all. Everything has been put under his feet. And But the beautiful thing is, we are his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. We are his representatives in our world. And Lord, today, we're going to exert and exhibit that through the power of prayer today. This is a great prayer. It's a wonderful prayer. I love Ephesians chapter 1. And, and Lord, I want that today to be wonderfully exhibited. And how is that going to happen? Lord, we're going to do uh, the last little focus that we're going to have today is the focus on our kids and our grandkids. We're going to stand in the gap for those that, Lord, are children, young people, young adults, young families and families with teenagers. Lord, we know that we need a Daniel, an Esther, a Mordecai and a Joseph raised up in this generation. Lord, I've often mentioned these four individuals. The reason I have mentioned them, Lord, over the years is because of the fact that, Lord, they had the ability to be able to navigate times where, Lord, it almost looked like everything was on the edge of destruction. It really did. But 
coming out of nowhere, for example. Here, the nation of Egypt is facing seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. And you strategically place Joseph to be the man that was going to be able to distribute that and also make that happen. Lord, that is absolutely wonderful. We're so gracious and so glad that, Lord, you are doing that today. And we're grateful, Lord, for your wonderful love. And Lord, today also as well, Lord, what we're going to pray for today, Lord, is this, that, Lord, you're going to raise up a Daniel. Daniel was a man who was stood in the gap. He was a man of prayer. His prayer and his belief, Lord, I believe anyway, brought about the influence that the people of Judah were able, Lord, to return to the uh, to uh, to Jerusalem and Judah. I believe that. But Father, He was able, Lord, to walk through the upper echelons of Babylon and Persia. Lord, then there's Esther. Esther was that little orphan girl who won the heart of the king and ultimately saved her family, Lord, and the nation of Judah and the Israeli people, the Jewish people, Lord, from destruction. And we are so grateful for that. Lord, we're thankful for the Mordecais who stood up to the sinister ministers of the day. Lord, there's a lot of people out there that are not what we would call good. In fact, they promote evil. There are people out there who actually enjoy evil. And it, to think that when they're little babies and they're starting off, that actually they find themselves in that position, I can't believe it. When I look at my little grandson, Lewis, for example, or the new baby that's going to come shortly uh, from my son and my daughter-in-law, when I think about the fact that, you know, they're so innocent and they're so pure, and yet over time, they, there are people who actually become human monsters. And it's terrible. But Lord, we're going to pray for revival because we know that, Lord, the next generation is going to be so dynamic. We're going to pray that, Lord, our young people are going to be the epitome, Lord, of what we would talk about, Lord, that they would know their God. First, I'm sorry, Daniel 11, 32, that they would know their God, they would be strong, and they would do exploits. That's what we're praying for, Lord, today. We're praying that that is going to happen, Lord, that people are going to know the goodness of God. They're going to, that's what we're praying. We're praying for the next generation. Lord, we've been praying Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 to the end of the chapter. But Lord, we're also praying for breakthrough today. And Lord, whether it's personally in our own lives or in the lives of those that we care and love about, Lord, we're going to do that today because we know that you have a plan and a purpose for every life. We know that, Lord, only you can bring breakthrough and victory, and we want to see that breakthrough and victory today. So, Lord, as we get ready to close our time and place of prayer, Father, today I'm praying that we would reset our lives. This would be the moment that we would do that. Lord, forgive us. Cleanse us. We're starting brand new. We prayed the prayer of Ephesians 1, and we pray for our kids. Lord, today, enable us to be the best ambassadors for you. I ask this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you like what you've been hearing, then I encourage you to press the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. My name is Robert Dean Steele. God bless you, and have a great day.